like a lot of you, I'm a big MMORPG fan, and unfortunately for us, the last few years have been, I don't want to say bad, but stale. While we do have established titles posting slow and steady growth year after year, the way they update through their expansions and content patches typically is in that safe, more of the same kind of way, which doesn't always appeal to people wanting to see new worlds and new ideas made real. Last year, the only two notable titles that we had was the barely localized Dumpster Fire that was Revelation Online, and the eventual release of Albion Online, a game that was delayed for so long that its release came after it was playable for well over a year beforehand. Looking to 2018, I spent some time, I dug through the big MORPG and gaming websites, I read listicle after listicle, I looked through press releases, and I watched quite a few of those top 10 MMORPGs of 2018 videos. And in almost a commentary to the state of MMORPGs, 80% of the games on these lists have no chance of coming out this year. 2018 is going to be just as dry as last year, with again, only two notable titles coming out this year, of which both of them have red flags. And those games are Bless Online and Crowfall. And I don't want to spend a ton of time on each, but in the near future, as they get closer to launch, I will cover them in more depth and just be better informed about them. Bless Online represents a formulaic theme park game. Much of its feature list, its dungeons and raids, its small scale and large scale PvP, dual faction, holy trinity, fantasy setting, it's familiar. I've played the game myself, and there is no real draw or thing Bless seems to do really well or better than other games, besides just showing up this year and not looking like some weird indie throwback to the 90s. Combine this, though, with an audience that just wants something new as the last real theme park game to be released above some arbitrary threshold of quality was probably Elder Scrolls Online or Wildstar in 2014, and you have something that might work. A giant red flag, though, is that this game has done poorly, bordering on failure, in three other regions, Korea, Japan, and Russia. In the process of localizing the game for our region, they are performing a revamp to performance and combat, as these are largely understood to be absolute garbage in both the original release of Bless and Bless Rebuild, which was the Japanese revamped version. So maybe the third rebuild of the game or the fourth region is the charm, but Bless is a game that success for them will be an uphill battle, even if they make the combat feel not terrible. They're only getting a shot because there really isn't anything else on the horizon. If they don't muck up monetization, I could see this game being quite interesting for a few months until content hunger dictates a lot, and then it's up to post-content release cycles, but a lot of details are up in the air, but it's a soft release, which basically because there are no wipes and they're charging money for it means that it's going to be a release and it's coming next month, so we don't have to guess too much longer. The second game is Crowfall, and it's tough to do this game justice in a quick summary. Suffice to say, Crowfall plays with the idea of what an MMORPG can be. It's a conflict-driven, PvP-first type of game with very light PvE elements. You join campaigns that are almost like matches. If I had to compare it to other games, it's like a longer, more fleshed out version of a battleground or a world v world type experience where you're fighting against other players over territories and forts and keeps. And with your group, your guild, your faction, you set out to win the campaign, which can have drastically different rule sets and victory conditions from other campaigns. Now, these campaigns exist as temporary things that you choose between and that will end that work to complement a permanent world or permanent worlds, as when you win or when those campaigns end, you bring stuff into these eternal kingdoms. And in these eternal kingdoms, you can build these up, you can alter the rules for them, you can prepare for campaigns in them, and end up being almost like these player-run servers as you can invite others, you can make them public, the UI lets you have your own little like favorite list, and in the process of building homes and castles and expanding and altering them through gameplay means fueled by what you win or what you bring back from your temporary campaigns, you create places that draw in people for different reasons. Do you create a trading hub or the equivalent to a lumber yard? Is it set up for a player-run PvP tournament or do you just like decorating? Like I said, it's hard to give it justice in a summary, as there are a lot of really cool ideas related to Crowfall that I didn't even touch on, but their red flag is, in less than 8 months, they want a soft release.
And a lot of what Crowfall is, is still ideas. And unless their testing phases have just been for testing the engine and the interfaces, and they're sitting on the actual things that make it a compelling game to play, they need more time. Even if it was just for the engine and the interface, they need more time. I've been in its playable alphas and betas for a while, and countless other games' alphas and betas, and this thought of them needing way more than eight months is not a unique or contrarian opinion. Crowfall, I hope, has taken note of Albion Online's release and reception, as not only do they share a ton of overlap in what they're trying to do and how gameplay is kind of going to work out, but also potential player bases and, most especially, issues that arise. The idea of a soft launch, where you perform your last wipe and turn on monetization, switching your game's business model from the donation slash support crowdfunding method to offering a service that you want people to pay additional for monthly, creates incredibly long-lasting first impressions that may bite them in the ass. That said, I bring the game up and will be introducing Crowfall coverage to the channel because in the last week, Crowfall has made some statements. They've answered some questions in such a way that I am on board with Crowfall. I want to follow what happens with the game and the team wherever it goes. Now, that's talking mainly PCMORPGs. I feel I also need to point out that we are in a bit of a porting and repurposing phase in MORPGs. We're seeing a lot of titles get ported to both mobile and console, which best case scenario expands the audience, but for most of us is a side note that doesn't actually affect us, especially since I haven't seen one that allows anything like a crossover or sharing of accounts cross-platform. And repurposing, we're seeing fresh start servers, progression servers, we're seeing even a specific game, a failed game, getting what amounts to a new patch and a new coat of paint and being re-released. Now I swear, I'm not mentioning the names of these games, but I bet you that Tryon had like a meeting about how do we further monetize dead assets because there's just a lot coming from the same places all at once. And because of how thirsty we are, we're getting tempted and we're buying into it. Now, I made the distinction of there only being two notable games, because while there are other games, Tale of Toast, Project Gorgon, Dark Falls, like, third split or something, and while, if you pressed me, I do have nice things to say about these games, which is why I mentioned these three specifically, these are like a special type of enthusiast type of game. These are games that if I asked 10 friends to come check it out and play with me, I'd get 10 LOLs. And I mention them because there will be commenters that are going to say like, why didn't you mention such and such a game with a potential player base of dozens of players? It's because it's not realistic. And the people who play these kind of games are going to be deep enough and active enough online to find them. But we're so thin in content in MRPGs, we really are scraping the bottom of the barrel for what to be excited about or what to even look forward to. Unfortunately, 2018 ends up being a lot like 2017 in that it's going to be slow. This is probably the last year before we start seeing the hyped up crowdfunded games getting playable states where we're bound to finally see some innovation in the MMORPG genre as they continue to look for and find additional ways to monetize their already passionate fan bases pre-release. But for 2018, I, I think it's actually time to take a step back and rediscover games that have been worked on since you last gave them a shot. MMORPGs grow and evolve over time, and earlier I, I quickly name-dropped Elder Scrolls Online. After four years of updates, it's in a much better state. A lot of games are in much better states. And so for me, what I want to do, both on the channel and personally, is spend as much time as I can with these established games to be able to give a revisited review, a, a what's changed, a what's good, what's special about these games in current year, and maybe give you a reason to give them a second chance. While I do believe that the genre is stale and upcoming games are looking more at what was instead of what else or what if, there are a few really stellar games and experiences out there to try and groups of people having fun and always seemingly ready to have room for one more. Now at the end here, I've probably made you sit through nine minutes of rambling and I should play the YouTube game and make it 10. I do want to highlight a new MMORPG resource, MMOPulse.com. This is a website put together by a YouTuber that I follow, Noct. And while I don't want to put words in his mouth, a lot of other MMORPG websites are garbage. 2P recently got shut down and it looks like MMO Pulse is looking to pick up the slack. In general, he's always had a leaning towards Eastern titles, non-English titles, which tend to have a really hard time finding decent coverage. So if you still use normal websites and are into this kind of stuff, MMOPulse.com, check it out. And that will do it for me. Until next time, this is Fever. Pulse.